Hey everyone and welcome to Already Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Star Trek The Next Generation Season 2 Episode 13, it is called Time Squared. So, full spoilers for the episode as always. This episode sees a weird anomaly, well, after the important next scene which I'll get to in a minute, but there's a weird anomaly where they find a shuttle drifting through space and when they, they beam it on board, it's like, this is weird, it's a Federation shuttle, but there's no Federation stations or ships nearby. This is very odd, and, oh, let's have a look at, what does it say on the side there? Oh, Enterprise Shuttle 5. And then they look over at the side. What's that over there? That's uh, Enterprise Shuttle 5. That's a bit weird. Then they open it, and there is an unconscious Picard sitting in the shuttle. Yeah, and they're like, hey, Captain? And he answers from the bridge or wherever he is. And they're like, yeah, okay, shenanigans. Yes, uh, to the point where Riker says, sorry, you're going to have to come down and look. I'm going to tell you over the comms. You're not going to believe me. Just come down here and see it with your own eyes because that is the only thing that's going to make this this, this story land. So that is the, the, the premise is that there's this Picard, this duplicate Picard and this duplicate shuttle. I think our minds all, especially since given the title, always jump to time travel immediately it takes the characters a little bit longer to get to that point but yeah uh, there's the mystery of okay you know what is this duplicate picard uh once they know they're in the f from the future and it's not a long time it's like six hours in the future it's a very short t time span it's like okay so what events lead to this and it kind of builds as they get more information from the shuttle and it kind of makes picard second guess himself and like okay if we did this last time would we do this time we went left so let's go right yada 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 uh, that kind of idea. And so. there's a whole debate as, oh, did, but did this happen last time? And did we? Are we just, you know, making the same mistakes? So, did you enjoy Time Squared? Yeah, it was all right. It was uh, not terrible. I mean, I thought, uh, thought that was good. I, I think uh, maybe just falls short of being great, and only just because it maybe doesn't really. I don't want to say explain. I don't think it needs to explain anything. But it doesn't necessarily go one step further to, like, have more of a point by the end. That's, that's what I say. It's kind of lacking a point. It feels like it's kind of just go at points. It feels like it's going through the motions. Just we're doing this story because this is the story. Yeah, because the because the, the the actual because I guess the, uh, the 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 heart of the episode is really the idea that is Picard going to doubt himself because he he's so flustered by the idea that he made the wrong call in the future but he has to ultimately go do that again like you know they're, they're going they don't know what causes this because they eventually find out the enterprise gets destroyed and picard's the only survivor on it, the show and it looks like picard has abandoned the enterprise you know we see this they get the, the footage off the uh the, the the flight recorder or whatever from the from the shuttle and they're watching this in the ready room and it's kind of distorted and it has that and I, you know i was really what i was really digging about this episode actually was the kind of the the somber mystery about the whole thing mm. there was kind of this this the mu even the music felt a bit more dark than than normal and they're watching this footage and the enterprise explodes and picard's left on his own and i think what i love about this scene is that you know after a couple of moments of awkward like what the hell you know i think like Worf's the first one to say well this doesn't make any sense uh, if, if we were in a crisis there's no way you would leave the bridge sir and Picard takes a beat and he's like yes of course but what I loved about that is that I think before that moment like I and I was kind of thinking this myself was like are, are they all thinking like did he abandon us like that's what it kind of looks like almost and yeah. I think Picard and like he asked what he's thinking he's thinking did I abandon them and why would I do that and I think there's something really nice about the idea that it's the others who say well of course you didn't do you know of course you would never have abandoned us because you would never do that there, there must have been a reason yes but and i like the idea that picard doubts himself given what he's seen but those around him who are loyal to him are like no you would never do that we know you wouldn't do that yeah. and it's a uh, pretty justifiable that he does doubt himself when all the evidence points to that at that moment yeah yeah because obviously by this point they've, they've got picard you know he tries talking to him uh, he has like a weird uh, medical condition in that Everything seems to be reversed in terms of biology, and what I mean by that is, like, stuff that should sedate him does the opposite, and stuff that should, like, wake him up sedates him for Yeah, <laughs> like, and it's not just him that's affected by it's that. It's the shuttle, uh, as, the well. shuttle as well. So it's obviously in a, a, a caused by whatever event happened. 
yeah, because uh, Jordy and, and Data, are, they're, they're tasked with getting information off the shuttle, and to do that, they have to turn it on. And no matter what they do, it doesn't work. They keep trying. Jordy's like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I keep, I'm giving it power, um, but it's not doing anything. And obviously, this is sort of intercutting with the, 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 the you know, the, the second Picard, who's like, at this point lying on the med bay table. And I kind of, you know, predicted what they were going to have to do to make it work. But eventually, Data's like, well, do the opposite and, like, give it negative power. Or, or, you know, whatever it was exactly. I don't know what the exact yeah. terminology was. And that, of, sure enough, all the lights come on. And, and Jordy's like, this makes no, that shouldn't work. <laughs> that, everything. But, it, uh, and Data's like, but it is working. Yeah, like, everything tells us this is this is wrong. This, this is like, this is like unplugging something from the wall and then it turns on. Like, that, that's, that's what the equivalent of this is. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, and like, no, this is what it is. So they, this is how they get the information, they get the flight record, they get the, the final uh, log that this Picard made. Hearing Picard listen to his own log, uh, also very, very kind of eerie. Yeah, yeah, because he's like, okay, it's he's he's obviously listened to other captains' final logs in the past. You know, I think we've even seen some of it. I think that's the big thing I'd compliment this episode for is that I don't remember the show ever feeling as eerie as this. Especially if you if you go back to uh, like uh, original series, I don't remember anything in the original series ever. I never, I don't think I ever described any episode as feeling genuinely eerie. I have a vague memory of feeling it, but I couldn't pinpoint as to any episode in particular. Because there was something about this countdown to like, okay, we don't even know what, what this thing that's going to cause this anything to happen. We know we're going to encounter something, but we don't know if it's a place, we don't know if it's a, a person or an enemy. Like, and th this is kind of driving Picard, not mad, but like, it's making him really unsure of anything and what to do. And Riker's trying to say, hey, your, your entire personality, the way you think, is to analyze the, the you know what's going on and come to a decision come to a you know a, a command of some kind and he's like but you you can't even uh, define what the problem is yet so you're left just sort of lingering mm. and it is interesting uh, yeah no I, I think the questions it poses is really good it, it just it never really feels like it makes uh because because there's, there's a scene with uh, troy and uh pulaski yeah uh where they have this debate where uh, Pulaski's like, hey, if Picard's going to start acting unsure of himself, I may have to relieve him, you know, he may be too unfit for duty. And Troy's like, wait, no, like, he's fine, and like, he, he's he's absolutely acting the way he should be, uh, given the circumstances. Um, and that was, and Troy, by the way, was the other thing that was telling us everything was negative, because he was like, oh, this is, this is just like you, Picard, but, like, he feels the opposite. <laughs> like, he feels... <laughs> Classic Troy. Oh, so like, see when she was like uh sense like you know emp empathizing i guess with him uh when he was lying on the table and they inject him with something and he starts kind of like you know spasming not, spasming yeah and like being in pain uh troy's like reaction is like just like like she's not the best actor on the show by any means and this was kind of one of those moments where she kind of like sort of howls in pain and it felt it, <laughs> It looks, it looks someone faking an orgasm. I don't know. <laughs> it just it didn't look or sound right. Maybe that was the direction. <laughs> she was sort of like, oh, it's like, I don't know. It's, I just I came off really cartoony, uh, and didn't didn't work for me. But I mean, minor minor quibble, minor quibble. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so she's she's like, no, she's arguing for him. He's like, no, no, I think he he will do this to the best of his command. But Picard is like, no, like whatever we did last time we can't do it again and uh what when they eventually actually encounter this entity you know when they, it's like a big vortex that's kind of pulling them in and they can't escape it they're going to max warp speed and they can't get go and picard even makes a choice against his best judgment because he thinks it's the opposite of whatever he did before because he's like well typically we'd stay and try and figure what this figure out what this thing is uh send out some sensors they send out a probe at one point uh, later and it just gets destroyed immediately so this thing is yeah. just you know not playing ball and he's like well because i would normally stay but maybe that's the mistake we made is we stayed and the th you know we were in danger and they try they try and leave and it just doesn't work they're going to warp max warp speed and the thing is just you know it's making nothing's happening yeah it's almost like they're on a cosmic treadmill like it's just like they're just not getting anywhere it doesn't matter how fast they go <laughs> yeah yeah uh so but then, then it's weird it's, it's like the thing actually attacks picard specifically um yeah uh, so it's like a sort of not quite a lightning bolt but it's like a blast of, of light and 
basically what we come to realize is that this thing is kind of personal and it seems to want picard because it also attacks the the, the the one that's knocked out the one that's in the med bay and what we seem to kind of come to is the idea that at least this is what, what i took from it is that basically this vortex was created because of the time anomaly and it wanted to like fix it or something that's that's kind of how i was reading it um okay. and that's why it had to end with the uh the you know the the duplicate picard that kind of had to you know not yeah. necessarily die because he disappears when they, they, they solve everything anyway but yeah. um like pick you know he's going to leave out and you get the impression that it's this picard this you know duplicate picard he's like no oh, i need to get the shell because when he wakes up he's like i have to get to the shell and picard takes him there and there's some fun stuff but they're kind of walking in almost unison and they both say you know uh something to the comms I, I, raker says something to him and they both and they say both answer. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, Picard realizes that if this duplicate Picard leaves in the shuttle, the same thing is going to happen again because that's again the Picard's in the shuttle and it's going to make this thing destroy the Enterprise. So he shoots himself. He shoots Picard number two, and that kind of you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because he has to quite a, a cold, hard choice to have to make. Yeah, especially given in the show about you know. Starfleet's rules and how they, they don't typically just go around killing people. They're, they're very, you know, it's always yeah. a last resort. Um, I think uh, this is. I mean, it's it's not murder if it's yourself, though, right? <laughs> well, that's the thing. Let's say they solve this without like ending the the loop element of it, because um, because the way they solve it for the record is they is they fly into the vortex. They say, hey, let's just go head first in, um, and that actually fixes everything. And as they're going through it, it. Um, it, you know, it makes uh, the fake, well, not the fake Picard, but the second Picard and the the, the duplicate shuttle, uh, they they disappear, they vanish, uh, yeah. and that, I, I guess that kind of makes sense. But they, they they fly through, and it's like, hey, we're just in normal space now, everything's fine. So I, I kind of got, I was taking the impression that, I mean, something had to happen in the first place for it to create this vortex, but I kind of got, yeah. or to, for the time loop to happen, but I kind of got the impression. The, the reason why the Vortex was attacking Picard is because he was the Time Anomaly. And... See, I didn't quite get that. I mean, you could be right. Um, I, I got more it was attacking because it was it, it felt like it was sentient to some level, right? It had I, some Again, I, I think that's debatable. Um, it is debatable. But, uh, again, this is a, a, a more on just how it felt. It felt like it was had some sort of sentience and it was... It had assessed Picard as the you know the the one in control the the, the actual yeah, threat rather than what, the Enterprise itself. That's what Picard two says, but Picard two just kind of whips this information out with no real indication of how they got that information. He's like, no, he sees us as a as a creature, and I'm the brain, and I'm like, okay, how? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, his, I'm assuming that had happened at some point in his first run through, and they'd kind of established that. Which is why he chose to leave the Enterprise in the shuttle in the first place. Mm. So, okay, it'll attack me and not the Enterprise. Which, which obviously neatly ties in the idea that, um, no, of course Picard didn't abandon everyone. He was trying to save them by leaving. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, simple enough. But it, like, it just, I think that's where the episode falls a little bit short, is that I, I don't necessarily know what final point it's kind of making with It kind with of this. loses its conclusion a little bit. Even, like, you know, we said, oh, yeah, Picard has to make that choice to kill himself yeah it, it kind of just feels like a well that's the answer it doesn't feel like a it's a lesson but the the, the mood and the atmosphere and all the build up to that i really like and i do like the kind of the ending ending which is uh, after the fact picard because you know they make the choice to go you know to go full steam ahead into the vortex and there's a nice uh you know obviously it says engage a lot but there was a nice like uh delayed sort of suspense element to this one where he's like okay everyone like gear up and do this and jordy you do that you know go mm. in uh lock these things everyone strap in and he's like it was just like it was an extra hesitant moment before he's like and engage you know it was just there felt a bit more weight behind it but like what i like though is that at the end the, the final scene of the episode is he's in the ready room on his own just looking out at this just looking at stars looking at space and raker comes in and you know picard is genuinely kind of shaken by the fact that he met himself uh, a version of himself who was very kind of you know not the not at his best let's say broken. yeah and ultimately had to kill himself um and so i, I kind of like pondering the effect of that uh and like picard like essentially having to deal with something that he he doesn't quite understand and he's struggling with like was was kind of fun to see it was good to see patrick stewart do that 
Uh, yeah, there was no easy answer for him. Yeah, uh, which I think was the fun of the episode. And, and combine that with the eerie atmosphere, I was kind of, you know, I was into it. I was, I was into the journey the whole time, even if the, the sort of conclusion to the actual story was, you know, just a little bit messy. Yeah, which is why I wasn't as, you know, super enthusiastic on it you know, when you asked me at the start how how i found it um if it had stuck the landing i'd have been you know this this was great as it was it's like yeah it was it was all right it kind of felt a bit meandering by the end even though i really enjoyed the journey for the most part and the atmosphere because it kind of never really went anywhere at the end it felt a little meandering because of it overall i think i'm still in the place even though we've had some great episodes relatively recently i'm still kind of of the the place where we're not really in the great section of the show yet and i think yeah. this for me is still head and shoulders above the vast majority of season one so, i would agree with that so for me this is in terms of like what next gen we've had so far this is not the best of the best it's not in that top three or four episodes but this i mean if i did that top 10 episodes of the show so far right now this would comfortably be in that top 10 Probably. I think that the, the problem is we did have that, you know, two or three great episodes. We did, yeah. That that showed, okay, this is what it's actually capable of. And now the now I'm holding the show to a higher standard, even though I know, you know, the rest of the season isn't necessarily but, at that standard. But that's the thing though, in a, in a way, this also for me kind of does that, just in a different sense. You know, th those episodes, you know, uh, Measure of a Man and the, the one before that with the Klingons, like, those kind of gave us these social ideas and these social debates and how it's going to tackle those things. This episode for me kind of showed me that, hey, if it wants to do like a really like atmospheric story, like sure, it would have been better if they somehow fit like a bit of messaging in there as well. But this kind of like gave me a kind of sense of, oh, hey, we can do maybe some more genre heavy mm -hmm. episodes uh, kind of thing or mood heavy episodes. Um, and maybe those will mix with the other stuff as well later on, but, you know, because I feel like Star Trek Next Generation and Star Trek the original series, definitely, uh, typically there's a standard feeling to an episode, and some of those episodes are really good, some of them are bad, but there's a standard kind of feeling to them, for the most part, yeah. regardless of whatever the plot is. And this one kind of made a point of feeling different, and I kind of liked that, so I'm hoping that's something they can play with going forward. As a, as a I agree thing. with that, that would so. be nice. Uh, but yeah, that's Times Squared. So uh, I mentioned the egg scene before we go and see what's coming next. Oh, uh, can't, can't forget that. The opening scene, Riker is making eggs for uh, most of the main cast. He's got them all coming around uh, to his... his, uh, his uh, quarters. Quarters, thank you. That's what I was looking for. I was like, they don't call it apartment. They don't, they don't call it... <laughs> what do they call it? The quarters. Um, and he's, he's making eggs and, you know, Data's quite rightfully asking, why are you doing this manually? Does, does you know, the computer will do it for you, you know? Uh computer will even add salsa for you that's a reference to the ace for anyone who's didn't get that um so uh you know he's, he's making eggs he's like yeah but you know the cooking there's the all the intricacies and there's the the, the slight variations that the chef can all put, will put in add some personality to it and yeah 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 give him this whole speech and then you know i think it's pulaski says where did you get these eggs exactly and he's like well uh, back when we we're on that uh that planet last last stop uh and he mentions like an alien it's not like it's not this is not chicken eggs from from earth this is some aliens eggs and he makes these eggs he, he gives them all out and everyone's kind of you know Worf's very trepidatious about the whole thing but the, the joke is is that Worf's the only one who actually likes them everyone else as soon as they taste them all hate them because it's not you know it's not chicken eggs it's these alien eggs uh, it's an amusing enough scene seeing Riker do his cooking. We learn a little bit how, he's, how his mother died when he was young and how his father, you know, was, was sounded like a good father, but he hated cooking, so he made Riker do it. <laughs> so um, he, he's, he's, he's a decent chef. For me, the amusing part here is I hate eggs. So watching this cast all be repulsed by the eggs that they've been forced to eat <laughs> was really amusing to me on a personal level. I just wanted to throw that anecdote in. <laughs> yeah, I love eggs. Well... Depending on how they're cooked. Mm -hmm. But I can love eggs. I mean, there, there are some kind of eggs I'm like, eh, not a fan. But I'm open to all kind of eggs. Uh, that, was, that, was, that was a great story. Yeah. Just eggs are pretty good, and, and you're just in the wrong here. They, they, they improve every breakfast. No, they ruin every breakfast. And this is, yeah, but eggs are disgusting. They've always been disgusting, they'll always be disgusting. So, you know, um, that's just what it is. Anyway, let's see what's coming next time. Uh, episode 14 next next time uh, is the Icarus Factor. And the 
the description on IMDb is as follows. Riker's delight at being offered a command of the USS Ares turns to frustration when the man sent to prepare him for his mission is his estranged father. Oh my god, he's... Do you know what? That feels like foreshadowing. Yeah, having, uh, him having him brought up in a casual little scene like that this episode is actually quite, quite smart now, I actually think. Yeah. That's actually quite neat. Uh, worst behaviour leads Wesley to delve into Klingon tradition. Oh god. Oh, that's gonna be cringeworthy, isn't it? That's gonna be cringeworthy. Uh, Riker stuff might be good, though. Yeah, it could be. Could be. Uh, the Icarus factor. There's a there's a concern it could be a little tedious, the family drama of it. Yeah, it could be. It's not especially highly rated on IMDb as far as the average goes, but we'll uh, we'll see how it is. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so that's the Icarus factor next time. This has been Times Squared, episode 13 of season 2. Apologies for some of the on and off scheduling in the last month or so. October was very busy, especially since Connor took, took a week's vacation. Uh, so... We spread out a couple episodes over like four weeks instead of four episodes over four weeks as as would normally be because that's what weekly means. But <laughs> we, we temporarily shifted to bi-weekly. Yes, we, we were bi-weekly for, for a little bit, but we should be back on the weekly schedule now. Uh, so we should be back with you next week for episode 14. Uh, so apologies. But uh, yes, yeah, so let us know what you thought of this episode of Star Trek in the comments below. Like and subscribe, all the usual stuff. And you can get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the show and the channel and everything we do, all the content we make, you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can do it by rating the podcast on Apple Podcasts, give us five stars. It spreads us out a little bit more. People will find us and uh, we'll have, you know, we'll grow, we'll be bigger and everything will be more successful. And that's good for everyone, especially us. Uh, we can also support us over at patreon.com slash mail fuzz tv for as little as one dollar per month and you get some bonuses you get some exclusives at the five dollar tier you get early access to a bunch of stuff including these star trek reviews and you get uh, a little bits and pieces as well so go and have a look and see if you're interested uh, but even one dollar a month is a is a huge huge thing huge huge bit of support so go and consider uh, but otherwise that is us so thank you once again for watching or listening we always appreciate it keep watching star trek guys and to everyone big connor live long and prosper <laughs>